Okay, guys, thank you very much for joining uh, us today for our webinar. Uh, so we're going to be talking about frontline workers and how you can improve your frontline workers for an employee experience. Okay. So before we get started, we're just going to go quickly over some housekeeping rules. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please don't hesitate to pop them in the GoToWebinar panel on your right-hand side. There's a little picture down here showing you where you can enter your questions. Uh, we will be sending out this recording after after the uh, webinar, so we try and do that. Hopefully, get that recording out to you before the weekend. Um, so that's it for housekeeping uh, rules for today. And then just quickly looking at the agenda then. So we're going to be uh, talking about how did we get here? What does engagement uh, mean? Why including your frontline workers in an internet or digital workplace matters? And then we're going to have a look a little bit, look beyond the digital, thinking beyond that. Uh, we're going to have a short demo. So we have David here who's going to be doing a, a quick demo. And then at the very end, we have a couple of minutes for Q&A and a wrap up. In total, the session will be around 30 minutes. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty quick. And next slide, David, please. So today's presenters, we got a uh, star star lineup for you guys today. So uh, really looking forward to hear from Janine and David. So I'm going to hand it over to Janine, who's going to introduce herself. Over to uh, to you, Janine. Thanks so much, Josh. Hello, everybody, and good day. Happy Thursday. My name is Janine Ervalli. I'm the head of business development at AppSpace. And I have the pleasure in working with enterprises uh, in their early stage of evaluation and really helping them with some expert advice on digital transformation. I also work very closely with my peer, David Fletcher, who is the VP of Strategy at AppSpace. And David, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to you for a quick intro and get us started. Thank you, Jean. So, um, yeah, my name is David Fletcher. I'm uh, Vice President of Strategy. My role is to try and understand the industry, the shape of it. Um, of course, mainly what Microsoft are doing in this space, uh, coming from where we've come from, we've heavily integrated with Microsoft in the past and still to this day. So really trying to understand the, the shape of the industry, how we've got to where we are. And that's obviously one of the topics we'll look at and where we're going. More importantly, what is the next wave? What, is, uh, what are the trends look like? And what are some of the key challenges facing organizations? And we'll refer to the likes of a Gartner, a Forrester, a KPMG, and the different um, kind of resources out there that help us to dictate and, and shape the way that we're going as a, as a product at AppSpace. So thank you very much, Janine. Firstly, I think it's important to understand where we are in the intranet, because the intranet is a term that is antiquated, slightly old, but still relevant. A lot of companies still call their internal digital workplace their intranet. And I really want to just take us on the journey of how we've got to the naming conventions that we see around today. I think the most common one we see today is employee experience, and that's very much thank you to Microsoft. Microsoft have done a lot of work in the last 12 months with Microsoft Viva, uh, with Office 365, and I think it's important when you're looking at particularly frontline workers to understand what that even means, because often frontline workers are missed out of certain portions of the employee experience. So historically, back in the day when I first started doing intranet projects in 2008, and I touched on this in the webinar yesterday as well, so apologies if you attended that one <clears throat> as well, because it's going over the same ground, but the first intranets I worked on were document repositories. They were information silos. And I've got many stories about going to visit customers in Germany that had paper newsletters that they were trying to digitize. I remember seeing a customer in Australia that told me that their intranet was the place content went to die. So I've seen and heard some interesting stories along the way. But for me, the intranet, as we knew it, kind of ended in around 2009, 10. And that's because the birth of social media uh, MySpace, Facebook, these sort of products that came out, not because everybody wanted a Facebook and a MySpace. They, they may have thought they did at the time, but the enterprise social network was about giving every employee a voice, something that still to this day is not everywhere in every organization. Then it kind of became the social internet. That was a term we heard for a while in the digital workplace. And today, what Microsoft in, in, in particular is driving at is that your Digital workplace, your internet, whatever you call it, should be the place that an employee goes to not only get content delivered to them serendipitously, but also to have a voice and be able to communicate and share that voice with the rest of the organization. And that really is the collaboration piece that BZ, which is the company that was acquired by AppSpace, came from. And now the most recent pillar of this, this kind of section, if you will, the transactions, is the idea that we've, we've gone past the point of just being personalized content in the internet. 
that, that is way past the idea of targeting news and social content. Now we're at the point where your news feed, your, your personal wall or whatever the nomenclature that you choose to use is, should be completely relevant to you from every single product that you're using. Whether you're a frontline worker with different health and safety software that you have to use or different health and safety uh, or check-in machines or kiosks, or you're a desk worker who's using Salesforce in the sales team or in the marketing team or using in HR using Workday or ServiceNow, whatever the products might be that you use in the organization, that should be in one single place in the newsfeed and it should come to you as an employee. And that is the employee experience. And often these last two pillars for frontline workers are missed. So we're going to quickly touch on what does engagement mean? And I know Janine's got some opinions here because she spends probably more time than I do now speaking to prospective customers. Um, but these are some of the things I hear, and, and I'm sure Janine hears as well, about what are engagement metrics? What, are, what does engagement even mean? And, and I disagree with some of these, I agree with most of them. But if we quickly look at some of the simple ones, number of active internet users. Now, how do you quantify active? Have they logged in once? Do they log in every day? And there's often a couple of um, metrics to this, and there's a few white papers on this about how do you look at an active versus uh, static, or someone who's logged in versus someone who logs in every day, or someone who contributes. And for me, that's the thing that matters, is how many individuals are contributing. Now, a con contribution is not necessarily posting a like or uh, a picture of their dog. An individual contributing could be as simple as assigning a task to somebody that is then manifested in the digital workplace or adding a document for, to collaborate on with three or four different uh, colleagues. Number of clicks, comments, shares, I, I think it's useful to have. And I think analytics is a key component when you're looking at engagement of different sectors of the organization. But I do also think it can often be a misrepresentation. There's a, a trope that I, I often talk about that I don't necessarily think reactions are the best thing for internet. I, I appreciate we need them, and I, I like smiley faces and emojis, and I think there's value to be had. But LinkedIn's a really good example. If you look at the statistics, the amount of thoughtful comments on posts that LinkedIn has now than before they had reactions is greatly diminished. Comments on posts are a lot less because now there are reactions that say the words they don't need to do, and you sometimes lose the human element there. So I think clicks and comments are often a bit of a misnomer. I could go through all of these, of course, but I, I do think that one of the most important metrics is that are every employee's reached? So firstly, are they logging in? Can they log in? Do they have access? And do they have a voice? And that is something I bang the drum on all the time. If I have a customer that I sit down with and says, we don't want frontline employees to post, I will challenge that. I, I, I do genuinely believe, and, and there's some statistics, particularly around McKinsey, to back this up, that by giving every employee no matter how ring-fenced that voice is, no matter how small you contain the ability for them to post, giving them that voice increases so many positive attributes around identifying with the organization, feeling like you can empower uh, your own voice to the organization, that you're being heard. There are so many different uh, research and reports that show this. And I think most companies I speak to who are starting on this journey get this wrong. They genuinely believe that Front lines should just be pushed. They should just see content, they should read it, and they should get on with their day. And in most cases, that's not true. In some cases, it has to be true. Factories don't always let them to have personal devices, they can't post. But even then, there are ways around that and, and allowing them to do something maybe to and from work. And lastly, of course, organizations absolutely need to listen to their users. If it is a factory where you can't take a device, that's absolutely fine, and you need to take that into account. But if a frontline worker is somebody who is literally a healthcare professional or somebody speaking to patients every day, then their, their voice is more important than pretty much anyone else's. They need to give the feedback to the organization. Anything you want to add there, Janine, at all on, on that slide? Yeah, thanks, David. I'd say that's absolutely true. And, and speaking with organizations and consulting, especially when they're talking about their frontline workers, they're always thinking of them as maybe second class citizens or maybe a lower level of a, an employee within the organization and restricting their communication and their engagement uh, but certainly by opening that up to our frontline workers that's where we're going to get true organic engagement and we're really going to be able to listen to the voice of the employee um, i know when i was in market last week doing some events with reagan there was um, a customer we met 
uh, from eBay, and uh, she was in charge of what's called the VOE, or the Voice of the Employee. And uh, she did monthly um, employee focus sessions with different people from different parts of the organization and included the frontline and transient workers. And the feedback that she got from that was actually put into 2023 steering committee and their planning. Um, it's actually affecting the outcome of the overall organization. So major, um, major key there is, is definitely opening up organization feedback uh, right down from frontline, um, right up to your desk workers. Thank you. That's a, that's a good story. I got a few of my own. I didn't, I didn't know that one. So I think, what is a frontline worker? Let's start there, right? Let, 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 we're going to go into the demo in a second and show you how we've found a few uh, ways. And look, it's not been easy. We've had a lot of challenges to get there, but we found a few ways to empower those frontline workers. But I think before we do, we need to understand what a frontline worker is and some of the unique challenges that they face. The statistics around how many frontline workers make up the US economy is, is staggering. And we'll, we'll touch on that in a second in the next slide. But Frontline workers are genuinely the backbone of most organizations. The, the ratio between desk worker and frontline is nearly always at least three to one in any organization that has frontline workers. So it's, it's always the majority of staff in most organizations that have them that is the frontline. And, and this makes up, whether it's healthcare, whether it's retail, whether it's factory manufacturing, it, it's something that we see an awful lot of. And although the people who are making up 80% of the global workforce are the people that we should be catering for. They're often, as Janine rightly just said, the second class citizens that we forget about. And I think we don't always take that into account and maybe not necessarily through desire. Sometimes it's through restrictions of technology. We can't give them access or from a budgetary standpoint, we don't want to go and buy them certain licenses for certain software in order to them to use it once a week or once a month. And again, these challenges are something that as a vendor, we've had to address, and it's not, not been easy by any stretch of the imagination. So some of the statistics are that 75% of frontline workers feel left out, and this is key for me. This is, this, is the, this is the home of the bullet. I spoke to a customer a few weeks ago who had a retention rate in a particular part of the organization, or, or an attrition rate, should we say, that was over 100%. So the turnover in a year was over 100% of staff. And the hiring costs that hit them with was immeasurable it was so much more than buying licenses or buying a software solution that would allow them to allow these front frontline workers to feel engaged so often particularly as internal communicators who tend to be the people that i speak to we were met with the budgetary constraints of well we don't have budget for this it's not a priority and it's about showing the tangible roi it's about showing and breaking down the costs of if we don't do this we'll continue to spend this money on hiring new staff so 75 percent are out of the loop and therefore not connected. And 84% of them believe that there isn't enough communication from management or any way for them to be reached. And of those frontline workers, 85% say that there is no consistent view of the internal story. And when there is, it's not regular. They're very much piecemeal and, and, and um, secondary thoughts, should we say. David, those are staggering stats, and they're certainly, um, they're, they're not great, but what it definitely shows is there's an opportunity to improve within major organizations to help those frontline staff just by implementing new tools, technologies, or processes. And that's it. And, and, and often technology, and I said this today in a, in a session with a, a customer who's, who's actually predominantly frontline, there's no technological magic bullet. It, it has to be a change management issue, but technology can certainly help. And obviously one of the constraints is that if they don't have a company laptop or an email address, and the email address is a huge one, how do you manage an employee that you have no real way of reaching or controlling access? And, and again, this is something that AppSpace have done a lot of investment and, and uh, well research on. Also, and this is staggering for me, is that I once spoke to a, a logistics firm who had no way of getting health and safety documentation to their drivers whilst they were on the go. Now, of course, as a driver, you don't want to be looking at your phone, but if you pull over or if you need access, you want to be able to check on what the health and safety mandate is for this particular area. And, and having a solution that allowed that to be targeted and instantly available was, was key to their success. And of course, with that, how do you communicate emergencies? How do you make broadcasts to organizations? And how do you also not only reach those employees, but allow those employees to reach others, allow them to feel part of the organization and not a siloed, forgotten, arm of the organization that you work for this is my favorite this mckinsey report and you can google this and download it but it, it it's the one that opened my eyes to how we can be really um 
using this argument as an ROI. We can be talking and helping internal communicators and IT and anyone running these, these projects to say, look, it's going to save you money doing this. Like genuinely, 45% of frontline workers plan to leave, and that's a conservative number. From the customers I speak to, it's, it's often higher. The cost of replacing an individual is one and a half to two times the employee's annual salary. I don't think people take that into account when they look at attrition rates and they look at turnover. It's always a consideration, but it's not the consideration. And if you start to balance the books on this, then you've got your business case straight away. And business units with engaged workers have a 23% higher profit. You only need to look at some really big companies in our industry that, that do this very well. They maybe don't treat their staff the best. There are some, I'm not going to name names, but there are some very big behemoth companies that we all know about, but their attrition rate is relatively low, right? It, compared to some other companies that maybe pay higher, it's not always about that. It's about allowing the employee to feel part of the organization. So how do we solve this? Of course, technology is a big part. We can help with technology. We're not the magic bullet. There needs to be change management. It needs to come from management. But the most important thing, and I heard this again from a customer today, is that this level of change comes not just from the top down, but from bottom up. So it can only come from bottom up if you give all of the employees a voice, allow them to feel like they have power. And that bottom up approach will manifest so many different things. It would allow uh, people to feel like they're happy to collaborate, communicate, they'll post, and they'll feel part of the organization. But having that alone is not going to work. You have to reach the employees everywhere. And in some cases, that is digital signage. It's the screen when you come into the office. It's the, the elevator as you make your way to wherever it is that you're going in the factory or any part of the organization. It's also the ability to safely and securely check in and manage staff in a way that we know who's here, we know how to reach them, we know how, how to get them. And of course, allowing users to actually, if they want to make a reservation or want to book a desk or a room, they may not be frontline, but they will be hybrid and they will be employees that may spend 90% of their time on the front line, but allowing them to make time to come and be. Oh, David, your your voice just went out there. Um, the volume, David, if you just pause for a minute, I think your volume's gone off. Um, while David's uh, carrying on and, and maybe not understanding that we can't hear his voice, um, I'll talk a little bit about, you know, David's mentioned a lot about feelings. It's really hard uh, to qualify or quantify feelings, but I think when we tie it into what engagement looks like within a digital workplace and providing that employee experience, um, it does come it does come down to, to managing those feelings. Um, David, we can't hear you. So just giving you a heads up here. There we go. I think you just, nope. No, we can't hear you. So we'll just give David a minute to come back up uh, with the demo where he will take us through a bit of a show and tell, no more than uh, five to six minutes on what this looks like in a full ecosystem. Oh, you're back. I don't know what happened, but it's like, can you hear me now? Yep, you're back. You're good. I apologize. I have been having hardware issues all day. Um, my laptop's actually going back next week. It's a brand new laptop. And uh, yeah, this is the third or fourth time this has happened to me. Uh, no did you hit the last slide at all? Yeah, so you had just left off on talking a little bit about feelings, and I had mentioned to the group that it's really hard to qualify or quantify feelings, but if we really talk about true engagement and employee experience, it's opening up communication to all employees so they can comment um, and share their thoughts and feelings, um, and that's where we maybe didn't get to your, your last talk track on the slide, so I'll let you take it over. Okay, thank you very much. I apologize for that. Again, I've, I've had issues all day with my, my, my laptop. Um, so the, the, the bit I care about, the bit that I, I'm very passionate about is engaged employees stay. They are happy, they can contribute, contribute, collaborate. There is so many books from so many leading organizations that talk to, talks about how the more engaged an employee is, the more productive they are. There's some really nice case studies about this. So I'm happy to share some with you afterwards if you want, or even recommend books, uh, particularly about some big software giants that have done this very well. Um, but ultimately, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's one of my passions. So with that, Apologies again for the, the technical issues, but let me dive into a quick demo for you. So this is AppSpace Internet out of the box. Of course, powered by BZ, BZ was acquired by AppSpace, but I wanna show you a few things that I think are important for us. So we are a product uh, from the internet side. 
that lives within the Microsoft ecosystem, right? So everything lives inside of your Office 365 tenant. Now, that won't always be the case. As part of AppSpace, we are uh, making ourselves a little bit more ubiquitous with other technologies. We're, we're opening uh, Pandora's box, if you will. But today, that's how we work. And the ability for us to create beautiful content has always been something I'm very proud of. The ability for me to go and write news articles in our CMS and target them to the nth degree to every pocket of users in our internet is something that I have always been very, very proud of. But one of the challenges we've always had is that we are a product that lives inside of SharePoint. We are a product that lives inside of Office 365. And inherently, that is difficult to share to external users. So with customers, um, we've got a few customers, I think this year have won awards for their mobile rollout. Some of them very large, uh, the likes of Glencore, which are a mining firm, which might be on this call. They won an award this year for their mobile intranet. They've got a set of unique challenges themselves. They've got thousands and thousands of miners. So being able to reach those miners in difficult places on, on devices has always been a challenge for them. So one of the things that I've been playing with and, and we've been playing with at, at AppSpace is how do we allow a user to engage and join the internet if they don't have a Microsoft license? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy and paste this text here that I created before the story. This is actually an article that my colleague Ruth wrote that is on our website if you want to read it um, i'm just going to take the title out here and you can see our content creation is very simple right it's it's very much like linkedin if you've ever written a news article on linkedin you will absolutely recognize this you copy and paste uh, videos from youtube or brightcove or altura or stream and it will embed them automatically we are also accessible so in north america that means section 508 um, if you're in europe that means wcag 2.1 AA. That means it works for all uh, screen readers, uh, very accessible and easy for people who are disabled. And then you want to go and add some imagery and some um, some nice, pretty kind of engaging content. In this case, I've added an image that has a QR code. And we'll come back to that in a second because it's very important when we're talking about frontline. I maybe add some videos. Uh, sorry, I've added a video already. Maybe add some images or a Spotify podcast or I don't know, whatever it is I'm trying to add. Our product will take care of the design. It will do all the hard work for you. It'll resize the images, put them in there. It'll embed Spotify players. It'll do all the things that you need without you having to worry about messing around with design. Effectively, we take care of the design so you don't have to. You can just concentrate on creating nice content and getting it out to your users. What does that look like getting it out to your users? Well, if you are a uh, desktop worker, then I don't need to worry about you, right? You're gonna see it in your language, whichever language I select, and you're gonna see it based on who I push it to. And I can push it to different channels. If I decide to push it to one of our digital signage channels, you will also see it on a particular screen. Now on the left-hand side of the screen that you see today is my iPad. This is using the uh, AppSpace software, so you can see down here, AppSpace software, and if I click it, it's automatically all uploading the Chichester office, which is where I'm based, it's actually my home office. But for the purposes of this demo, it's got a lot of creatives, a lot of marketing, a lot of designers, and maybe they don't have a Microsoft account. Maybe they're Gmail, maybe they're Hotmail, maybe they don't have any personal email account. So how do we get them access? Well, there's two things we can do. One, as soon as we publish this down here, so if we're going to schedule it and publish it now, it'll automatically, once it publishes, be visible on this screen. The QR code can do one of two things. Now, one of the things it can do is just open up a browser version of the news story and allow you to read that news story from the browser without any sort of login or access. More commonly, what we've seen, and this is a unique challenge we had from a particular customer, is this QR code will actually automatically pull up this form. This form will ask me to fill in my employee ID, my name, my second name, my email address, whether it's Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, whatever it is, whatever email address you want, we also have the option here to use a phone number if you don't want to use the email address. And then you choose which department and location you are. Now, why is this important? It's important because in our product, what we've always said is we've said, well, we create these things called audiences, which make it able to target everything from policies and procedures to posts, to broadcasts, to everything in one single, easy to manage way. So when I go into my editorial settings over here, I can very quickly, very easily go to the global section and I can create audiences. When I've created them once, they will dynamically update every night. That matters because automatically everything that is pushed to the South American audience will be seen by the South Americans. Now that is all controlled by 
our HR system or by Active Directory. But if a user is not in Active Directory, how do you do this? You do this by allowing them to add the form. Automatically, this form will add them into AD and we can manage those users the same way we manage any other user. All frontline workers now have a full, rich experience. They can do all the same things that everyone else can because they've signed up that QR code, sent them a little uh, email, they signed up, they got a verification code, they logged in, and automatically, based on where they logged in, they see personalized content. The news is relevant to them in their language. Their newsfeed, relevant to them in their language. It knows their frontline. It knows they have a health and safety policy or the particular um, broadcast announcement that needs to go to everybody. So by combining the physical and the digital here, we've automatically added these users to uh, our product. The beauty then is, of course, this is available on any device. We have a real uh, native mobile app, which has push notifications to any single part of the organization. You can push them on Apple Watch, Android, wearable, whatever, and they are then suddenly empowered. Everybody has a voice. Whether it is ring fence to only one community, which is your department you work in, or your project, or your team, or your location, you can ring fence and make them feel like they have a voice, like they're empowered. And there's one very simple stat that I try to give to customers when they're rolling this out for the first time. Your digital workplace or your intranet should feel 70, 20, 10. It should feel 70% user generated. The newsfeed is the most powerful part of our organization. It feels like our peers, our colleagues are posting. It's not rocket science. People use Facebook, they use Twitter, they use LinkedIn because it feels like it's by the people for the people. The reality is it might not be. Most of these cards might be editorialized, but by simply giving your employees a voice, even in a ring-fenced way, they are going to be, feel empowered to share, to post, to collaborate, and feel the identity as part of the organization. And of course, within this, there are a few other um, important aspects. So let me just log in over here on the screen. You can also, if you are that frontline worker who has to go and visit the, um, the, the office in, in London or in, in Chicago or wherever it might be, you can of course book those spaces as well. And this is something that AppSpace has done very well for a long time, the idea of wayfinding, the idea of kiosks, the idea of being able to book this desk or book your building pass and log in with that QR code when you got, get there. By simply adding an employee once from the medium of a digital sign or a screen, they now have access to your full internet within the context of everything you want them to see. They go to their places, they go to their pages, they see the health and safety for them. Everything is personalized and they feel no longer a second class citizen. They feel part of the organization. Okay, I'm gonna pause two minutes for questions and answers unless there's anything else you wanna add at all, Janine. Yeah, that's brilliant, David. Thank you. you. You certainly showed the full ecosystem of a digital workplace with uh, engagement across uh, several different uh, varieties of an employee base. Josh, I know at this point in the, the demo when David shows a little bit of how it all comes together, there are quite a few questions that come through. Um, is there anything that uh, is on the Q&A chat that you can call out? Yeah, sure. Firstly, uh, to Janine and Dave, thanks for that great presentation there. Yeah, we did have a few questions that came through. So uh, one of the questions uh, that we got through, David, maybe I'll aim this one at you first. So David, is this what you mean by omni-channel then? Someone, someone's written a comment in there. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Um, omni-channel is a, a term we hear a lot at the moment. RFPs, RFIs, uh, I think Gartner have also about to do something on this. So Omnichannel is, uh, there's two ways of looking at it. One is create content once it goes everywhere. And yes, what I just showed technically could be omnichannel in that response. But for me, something I didn't get into today, but I think is more important is true omnichannel is not create once, distribute everywhere. Omnichannel is the idea that no matter where you are, the content comes to you. And that goes more to the idea of personalization and content on any device anywhere. That for me is true omnichannel. So, Whilst, yes, I would say what I showed is partially omnichannel, if I'd have gone into the newsfeed and the personalization a bit more, then yes, that, that's what I would consider uh, true omnichannel. Uh, good, good question. Okay. Uh, I know we don't have much time, so the questions that we don't get round to, we definitely reach out to you via email. Uh, I think we've got time just for one more quick question then, uh, David or Janine. Uh, can you explain a little bit more about how the Microsoft uh, licenses work? That was another question. That's we had a tricky one. Um, so Microsoft licenses aren't easy. I would say that most customers that we have will have E3s or E1s licenses. 
frontline either will have an F license, a K license, depending on how old they are, or no license. Um, you technically don't need a license to have access to all the things I showed you today. Uh, it's just if you want to, for example, give them access to things like Teams or um, maybe some other parts as well, but we have options there. So whoever asked that question, maybe better to reach out directly, or if anyone else has that question as well, uh, we can have a chat because licensing is a, is a dark art, but um, something that we've had to deal with over the years with our customers, so I can definitely give some uh, best advice there. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, we're at half past the hour, so our time's up. So uh, thanks again to Janine and uh, David for that presentation. And thank you everyone else for joining our, our webinar today. Uh, we hope to see you in another AppSpace webinar soon. And you can always go to www.appspace forward slash events to see our upcoming uh, webinars. So uh, that's it for us today. Uh, thank you very much and goodbye everyone from the AppSpace team. Thank you. Thank you.